over the past <clears throat> three years, we've probably gone from intrigued to fascinated to excited to now fully evangelistic. Yes. Uh, the, the technology we're talking about is clearly, it is a uh, CCTA, which is a fancy CAT scan that you then take these images and upload them uh, onto a cloud-based technology where they overlay um, the artificial intelligence to recreate um, basically a virtual heart calf, mm -hmm. where we now have granular level detail on um, the coronary arteries and the condition they're in, the type of plaque burden they have, and the nature of the plaque. Um, and, and this has really been one of the biggest things in my mind lately. It's something that you're probably tired of me talking about. <laughs> Never. Um, number one, it, um, it has a lot to do with the, the patient population that we take care of, um, of, of the three, the big three as we call them, heart disease, cancer, and dementia. Mm -hmm. Heart disease is number one yes. on people's minds. Uh, to avoid if possible and to know about it early um, if it happens to be in your path. Selfishly, it's something that I'm walking through as mm -hmm. a 40, almost 49 year old male. Uh, I have discovered some things about my current cardiovascular risk profile that I'll share a little bit later that selfishly is driving this along. As I always tell people, I'm, I'm a chef who eats my cooking. I am in this arena just like you, just mm -hmm. like the listeners, just like our members. I'm trying to navigate um, the things that I do and don't do, the decisions I make about my health in a way that represents my personal thesis mm -hmm. um, and, and not to be some ivory tower situation where I'm telling you to do what I say, not what I do. I always tell people if they want to know what to do, just watch what I do. Yeah. I really, I really do try to eat and train and sleep and and risk manage the same way I do my patients for my own life. Um, and so there's a selfish drive behind this topic. Um, but I think as we get started, the brief overview, I think it worth, it's worth just touching again on what is heart disease, mm -hmm. right? So heart disease is, um, is, a, is a generic term that we usually, that usually encompasses everything from hypertension to heart attack and to stroke, mm -hmm. uh, and it all has to do with the hardening of the arteries that feed our heart called our coronary arteries, and this hardening takes place through a process known as atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is wildly complex, uh, incredibly multifactorial. There is no one clear path to atherosclerosis, um, and it leads to heart attack, stroke, and vascular disease. and it's probably the only ine inevitable disease of humans. Mm -hmm. If you live long enough, you will have a hardening of your artery. Atherosclerosis under enough time, area under the curve, time in residence, as I've said all the time, you will develop a hardening of arteries. Second might be like arthritis. If you live long enough and move around long enough, you're gonna have arthritis in your shoulders and your joints and your hips and your knees. It doesn't mean you have to be negatively impacted by the arthritis, and I believe the same for atherosclerosis. So what we're looking for are early accelerators of atherosclerosis because that's where it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Are you going to absorb a negative consequence because of your atherosclerotic process? And the highest risk for negative impact are accelerators. So smoking, diabetes, obesity, family history, these are the things that make it go faster. Mm -hmm. We're also looking for evidence of early disease that has already taken hold. And it's all well and good to not know what to do with risk factors you have and to really put some, some rainbows and sunshine around it and say, I think I'm fine. Um, but clearly it's changing the game there because now we can actually see what's going on. And so we can find early disease where we otherwise would be totally blind. Mm -hmm. And for the people who we know have heart disease or people who we know are very high risk to have heart disease, we get early eyes on the disease mm -hmm. and we can be far more strategic in avoiding the negative impact, the icebergs, yeah. like millimeter shifts, years 
in advance to avoid the iceberg. That's amazing. That's a quick overview of why this is significant. I'm curious, Jen, your perspective clinically on how we actually practically this affects the way we manage our members. Do you have some thoughts on that? Oh, yeah. So I think it points back to our North Star, which is we don't do population health. We do the health of one. And we do precision medicine here, meaning uh, we take a look at all of those things that you mentioned, your current health status, your family history, um, you know, all of those risk factors when we look at a, a person as a whole. But doubling down on clearly has really changed the game for us. And, you know, we were talking earlier about we used to think the calcium score was like amazing data. Yeah. Um, and we would get a calcium score on. And it was game changing. Yeah. And, and it was all we had at the time without sending somebody to cardiology for a full workup and, and all of that. <clears throat> but since then, you know, we have been fortunate enough to um, elevate the game and, and advance to the coronary um, angiogram, which we then upload, like you said, to clearly. And there's also heart flow which is different, but um, those two things have really changed the game for our members, um, mostly because, as you alluded to before, we're able to catch this thing early. So we talk about, you know, heart disease being area under the curve. The longer you're exposed to high blood pressure, elevated particle number, um, the the more advanced your atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis is going to be later on down mm-hmm. the road. Um, so can we catch it early and either delay it or um, figure out where you are in the process and start medication or exercise diet all of those things that maybe you're not doing Um, but you know in our members now you know if they had a cal even if they had a calcium score of zero and they want to know more about their cardiac status or we do we're recommending the ccta and then the clearly and we have found in plenty of our members they might be they might have a normal blood pressure they might be metabolically stable they might have a slightly elevated cholesterol panel or apob but we find plaque and mm-hmm. we can determine is it stable or is is it unstable how aggressive do we need to be mm-hmm. and it kind of takes the emotion out of it right like totally I, I recently I had one yesterday, um, mm-hmm. so I can speak to that mm-hmm. um, very well. Um, that thankfully my clearly is fine, and we just did it as a baseline. My calcium score was zero, so I didn't expect anything to really come back scary. But you know, while you're waiting for that, um, you're kind of like, okay, what's this going to tell me, and and what can I do with this information? But just having objective data to kind of be yeah, you're the perfect case study for where this tool is incredibly powerful Mm -hmm. in that you have an incredible metabolic profile. Your calcium score was zero. Mm -hmm. But by definition, a calcium score only tells you how much calcified plaque is there, which is stable plaque. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell us anything about non-calcified plaque. Now, with your total risk stratification, you were low risk to have any significant non-calcified plaque but we don't know for sure right and but now we do Mm -hmm. and so i just think it gives another layer of confidence that that the data we're looking at the decisions that we're making about your health are reliable yeah and um, it's a more powerful decision and i i just think in summary clearly has unequivocally changed the game for how we at our practice risk stratify our members for the number one killer of humans Mm -hmm. on the planet, which is heart disease. And it it also gives our members more ammunition for that off, uh, uh, that offensive mindset that we've talked about so often in our podcasts. Yeah, no. And we have a lot of very sophisticated, um, people Mm -hmm. in our practice and, they're they're trusting of us and we have their best interest in mind and we have that relationship but there there's something about having an objective nothing personal this is just what i see saying hey you have xyz going on and we haven't been addressing the two things that are definitely connected to these because we just assumed you were fine once you realize you're not fine 
it affects the way there's a shift mm -hmm. in how you think about de-risking your future. Yeah. Now, people can choose to not do anything about it, and that's totally up. Everything has a cost, risk, benefit analysis that needs to be thought of. But if you're over 50 and you're listening to this and you haven't gotten a clearly study yet, this is one of the tests that I couldn't make a stronger recommendation to think about. Mm -hmm. If you're not having symptoms, your insurance will not pay for this. Right. This is something that you're going to have to pursue as an investment into your future health yep. and your future outcome. Um, and, you know, depending on what market you're in, the availability, it may be super easy to get and super inexpensive. It, you may have to drive a couple hours and it may not be cheap. But please look into it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, of all the things that we should be thinking about on the back half of life, heart disease is number one. Yeah. 